Okay, so in the previous lesson, we talked about the vertex form of a parabola. Today, we're going to look at equations in, the f uh, in vertex form and look at how to get them into standard form. And as you may recall, uh, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to simply follow the order of operations. So let's look at an example here where we have y minus 16 uh, equals 3 times x minus 5 squared. Now recall that order of operations would tell us to solve what's inside of parentheses first, which I can't do that, because x minus 5, I can't simplify that. The next part in the order of operations is to take care of an exponent. So do not, even though it's very tempting to distribute the 3 through here, because anytime we see something outside the parentheses, we're in the habit of distributing right away. Well, we have to look at this um, exponent here and make sure we take care of that before we do any distributing, because Multiplying comes after taking care of the exponent. So notice how what we have here is we have a binomial that's being squared. So we're going to use that binomial square theorem, which tells us that we just take and square the first term. So I'm just going to rewrite what I had here. And then remember to find the middle term. We multiply these together and, and uh, double it. So negative 5 times x would be negative 5x. Double that makes it minus 10x. When we square the negative 5, that becomes a plus 25. So we just expanded, that's what we call that, we expanded the parentheses here out to be x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now I can distribute, because now the next step in the order of operations is to multiply or divide, so I'm going to multiply everything in parentheses by 3. So I get y minus 16 equals 3x squared minus 30x plus 75. And lastly, in my order of operations, it says to add or subtract. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. So I get y equals 3x squared minus 30x plus 91. And as far as identifying my values for a, b, and c, a would equal 3, b would equal negative 30, and c will equal 91. So now, why don't you guys give the next one a shot? So again, just follow the order of operations. Make sure you take care of parentheses first. So expand out the x plus 3 squared first, and then distribute, and then add or subtract. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. OK, so let's check to see what you had here. So you should have had y plus 5. We're going to expand out the x plus 3. So that becomes x squared plus 6x plus 9. The reason why it's 6x in the middle, if I multiply the 3 times the x together, I get 3x. Double that, you get 6x. And again, 3 squared would be 9. So now I distribute the 4 through. Rewrite the y plus 5, because I haven't done anything with that yet. So it's 4x squared plus 24x plus 36. Now I subtract 5 from both sides, giving me y equals 4x squared plus 24x plus 31 is my final answer. And my a, b, and my c, a in this case would be 4, b would be 24, and c would equal 31. Now the congruent parabola theorem, you can write down, we're not going to emphasize this too much right now, um, but it just basically says if I want to compare two parabolas without having to graph them, to see if they're equal to each other, if I have one equation like y equals 2x squared and the other one is y equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 3, these two uh, parabolas would be congruent to each other because of the fact that these two parts are the same. y equals ax squared is the same for both of those. Well, one part that I did not include in your notes that you need to have that I forgot to uh, type in here is this equation. This, height of an ob this equation gives us the height of an object after a pe certain period of time. And where time is the t in seconds. The variables here, the v sub 0, that's what that represents, represents your initial velocity. And h sub 0 represents your initial height. Now, the gravity is going to be a number. We have to figure out what that is. If your measurements, if you're dealing with a story problem, it's all given in feet. We're going to use 32 as your acceleration due to gravity. And if 
Uh, all of our measurements are given in meters. We're going to use 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's look at an example where it says, uh, where we have to come up with the equation here. It says, uh, find an equation for the height of a ball thrown from a, in, this is supposed to be an initial height of 6 feet and an initial velocity of 4 feet per second. So my equation would simply be h equals, the fact that everything is in feet here tells me I'm going to use my 32 feet per second. Well, my equation is negative 1 half times g, so half of 32 is 16, so it's going to be negative 16 times t squared, plus my initial velocity. My initial velocity is the 4, so it's going to be 4t, and then plus my initial height, which is 6. So it'll be negative 16t squared plus 4t plus 6. So that's how you'd come up with your equation. Now sometimes they're going to give you the equation and we have to do some things with it. Like let's look at the next example. Here they give us an equation. The ball thrown as a ball, a thrown ball has a height of negative 16 t squared plus 59 t plus 4 after t seconds. Find h when t is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm just going to set up a table here. Find the height after these certain times of 0, 1, two, three, and four seconds. So if I put zero in this equation, I'm going to end up getting four as my answer, because zero squared is zero, and 59 times zero is also zero. So this so far, well, first part would be zero plus four is four. Put one in there. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm going to take negative 16 times one squared plus 59 times one plus four. Doing so, when I tape that in my calculator, it's going to give me 47 as my answer. If I put 2 in there, you can do that on your calculators. Just go back and edit that and change those to be a 2. Um, and when you do that, negative 16 times 2 squared plus 59 times 2 plus 4 is going to give you uh, 58 as your answer. Do that again. This time, replace it with a 3. So do this on your calculator you're going to get 37 as your answer. And do it another time with 4. You end up with negative 16 as your answer. So let's answer some questions here. It explains, this is explain what the pairs T and H tell you about the height of the ball for 0, 2, and 4. So basically what they're looking for is that um, after 0 seconds, The height of the ball was 4 feet. So that's what that means. After 0 seconds, the height of the ball was 4 feet. Um, after 2 seconds, the height of the ball was 58 feet. And the key here is that after 4 seconds, the height of the ball is negative 16, meaning the ball hit the ground. Or you could also say something along the lines of between 3 and 4 seconds the ball hit the ground. Because after 3 seconds the ball now is coming back down again. It's 37 feet above the ground. Where after 4 seconds it's negative 16. So between 3 and 4 seconds the ball hits the ground. Now they say to graph the uh, domain. Graph the, or graph these uh, coordinates. So here we have a grid already set up for us. So after 4 seconds, 0, 4 would be just under halfway here. After one second, it'd be up to 47, which would be a little over halfway. After two seconds, it'd be up to 58. After three seconds, it's down to 37. And four seconds, it's down to negative 16. So there's the path that the ball would travel. And now the answer part D, it says, is the ball moving in the same average rate of speed between zero and one? as it is between 2 and 3. So what you do here is you'd use the slope formula. Between 0 and 1 and 2 and 3. So to do that, you take, um, subtract your y's, so it'll be 47 minus 4. Because again, the rate of change is the same as the slope. That's why I'm doing this. 
So be 47 minus 4 over 1 minus 0, which gives me 43 feet per second would be my speed between 0 and 1 second. For the second part, between 2 and 3 seconds, I would take 58. I could do 37 minus 58 over 2, 3 minus 2. Whoops, which in this case would give me negative 21 feet per second. Having a negative speed is possible. It just means that instead of speeding up, where the first one was speeding up, going uh, 43 feet per second, um, going between 2 and 3 seconds, it's slowing down now at 21 feet per second. Or another way to look at it is it's dropping. would be a better way to phrase it. It's dropping at a rate of 21 feet per second. We're here from one to two seconds. It was increasing, it was going up at a rate of 43 feet per second. Okay, we're gonna end there actually. If you wanna do these on your own, you can. Um, but otherwise, I'm just gonna let you go with that. Um, so you can go ahead and start working on your assignment. So basically, the key here to doing these problems is mostly on the front here. Making sure you know that to get it from vertex form to standard form you just follow the order of operations don't forget to wait to distribute until after you've expanded the parentheses and the other thing you want to make sure you know is this formula because in the future you're gonna to have to come up with this formula on your own like we did in this example on this first page so good luck on your assignment